What's going on, everybody? So we are here talking about Heroes of Middle Earth and kind of where we're at in terms of a community, as well as what we can expect in the game and whether or not we are feeling good about where we're at. Now, I know I could have titled this video is home dying, dead game, trash, whatever it is, and I could have done a little bit better. But uh, well, I just don't think that we're as a community there i don't feel like that is not even it's not even like a question right now um there are a lot of annoying things about this game don't get me wrong <laughs> there are also a lot of fun things about this game and some things that i think are going to be improved over time and things that we can expect uh to improve our quality of life in the game but at least in terms of the community that i have here the people that i've seen interact with the game we're not close to, to the game is the game dying, which will be a question at one point or another in uh, in the game's lifespan. In fact, even like a month and a half ago before we had raids, people were like, wait a second, is Hero Mil Heroes of Middle Earth dying? Like, is it a dead game? Because we were, you know, a month into the game and we weren't getting any new content. So it, the, the community sentiment to make it shift very, very quickly. But we're definitely not at that point at the current moment, which is which is good. Unless maybe I'm I'm in a more optimistic mindset. Maybe you all will tell me something else in the comment section. You're like, yeah, I see it all the time. <laughs> so there's a few things I want to talk about here when we're talking about where we're at, the state of the game, things like that. First off, content. I think this is the biggest issue that the game had when the game launched was that there was like nothing to do, right? You didn't have a reason to push campaign because there was no hard notes to farm. You didn't have a reason to push guild campaign. There was no guild campaign nodes to farm. You didn't have a reason to really push the adventures because they were level locked and level locked was locked behind, you know, energy expenditure. So you basically could finish the daily challenges. And in fact, within the first three weeks of the game, you basically were progressed as far as you possibly could progress for the amount of resources that you could get for your character. So or account. So there wasn't anything to do. That was that was the story of the game. Since then, we've gotten marquee events. We've gotten new legendaries. Well, one new legendary. We've gotten two new raid chapters with a third coming very, very soon, and a big road ahead blog. All of these things have greatly improved the experience in the game in terms of content. Does that mean that we are needing more content? Yeah, we still need more content. This is just the beginning, right? And I want to mention this very specifically because it's not that we just need more things to do. We need more time wasters. We need things that are fun to do, right? And I want to specifically mention chapter one of raids here when i say this because even they are acknowledging cg that is that the chapter one raids are just not that fun and i would agree you know raids as a concept raids as a whole are actually quite fun and i have a good time participating in the raids but there are some times like the other day when we launched a raid and i knew i couldn't sit down for like two hours i loaded up i played for an hour and i had a battle that went nine times in a row where I missed a coin flip or I missed like the 90% chance of the bomber throwing the bomb on his en uh, on the enemies. And not only was I annoyed, but also I just ran out of time to be able to actually get my score. And that was just because I got unlucky like eight, nine times in a row. Now this doesn't always happen. Some of my battles, I only do one to two attempts, but some battles I do like nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever it is attempts. And that amount of RNG is just not quite enjoyable because what you end up doing is just repeating the exact same process. It's not like it's a strategy, um, unique strategy every time and you're like thinking on the fly. No, you just like cookie cutter like, okay, I use this skill, this skill, this skill. I get him up to a 70% chance. If he throws the bomb on me, I restart. And you end up doing that over and over and over again. It's just not particularly fun. So and when we're asking for new content, I'm asking for things that you can actually engage with maybe perhaps unique strategies, which you can in chapter one, but without the really, really annoying repetitive content aspect to it, where the RNG kind of takes over because there's obviously going to be re repetitive content raids by nature are repetitive, but you take something that you do every week and then you make it so that you have to do it essentially 10 times every week because of the RNG. And that part is not fun. Now, there are a couple pieces of content that I personally think would be really, really great additions to the game. And I'm gonna start this off with things like Galactic War Conquest Mode from Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now, I do use Swaga as a reference because same game by CG, essentially, same game style, and pretty much a template for where this game could go. And in my opinion, there are three game modes that are exceptionally fun. And the third one I'll mention in just a second, but two that are PVE related and are actually relatively early game concepts. 
galactic wars where you put together a team you fight random sort of like mini arena battles you could think of um and you as you go through you just get additional rewards and eventually if you do it 150 times you can just sim it right this is something that i think we absolutely need in this game something to test some teams now as we get deeper into the game the ability to test teams on these random like bad arena battles isn't really worthwhile but for the early game it's really nice to test like gear five teams or gear six teams just to see what they're able to do against other members of the game but you can't really do all that well uh in arena to be honest because you're fighting you know whatever the strongest arena comp is this gives you a little bit more I guess you could say dynamic to the game a little bit more fun and eventually you're going to be able to sim it if you don't want to participate in it anymore which is perfect and then for conquest well that gives you hours upon hours of, of content now i do want to mention that there are some things that you don't want to take away from conquest but it's essentially the ability to just fight these random battles um they have kind of requirements to them and you have to fulfill those requirements separate energy system essentially just more ways to use our teams and battle to get additional rewards now again there are definite criticisms and i could sit here and explain the entire game mode i know i didn't really do a great job of kind of explaining to those of you that haven't participated in conquest before or even galactic war but they are actually quite complicated systems and well not all of it's great basically what it boils down to is we want more ways to test out and play with characters that we've built up and this is a very common sentiment across all of these games you want to be able to actually use the characters that you've earned or invested into in terms of monetary <laughs> wise right the third game mode that i want to mention is some sort of competitive pvp mode that's not arena now i think again star wars galaxy of heroes did probably the best job i've ever seen out of any mobile game do and that's grand arena where you place defensive teams you cannot use the same characters more than once and then you go on offense and you cannot use the ones you placed on defense and you have to beat your opponent's teams you get match made and as you start to win you increase your matchmaking ranking now if you're a whale you're going to be on the top that's just kind of how these games work but it's still a really really fun way not only for free-to-play players to kind of push their skill level because you'll be able to punch up a lot if you are good at these game modes but also earn some extra rewards i think these things are amazing amazing things to have in the game even if you don't even like pvp modes you can just log in play a battle or not you can just hit battle quit the battle and then you get free rewards right that's always good for any player right so content i think is the main focus and that's what's majority of this video is that i think that in terms of the game and where we're at content is what we're missing and yet content is also what we've gotten for the past month or two as for new characters, obviously I want to see new characters come. I've already mentioned Boromir and Faramir themselves as people I want to see in the game coming, and they've already came to the game. So we are getting new characters regularly, which is a great thing. I think the biggest thing outside of those things is quality of life, bugs. This kind of go hand in hand. And then the way we are going to acquire resources going forward. So Bugs in this game, there are a few annoying ones, you know, as like you're start an arena battle, you start a, a raid battle, whatever it is, and you get locked out or you have to restart the game, things like that. Obviously, I'm not going to talk a lot about bugs because it just happens in a lot of games, but they do need to be addressed as we go forward. Quality of life, on the other hand, this is pretty important. Um, you run the danger when you have these games, balancing wanting to put your players inside the game for additional like time spent in game statistics and giving your players the ability to just sim things log in and not do the annoying parts of the game now i don't think there's anything in the game necessarily that needs to be instant completable like the raids for example but i do think there are some easy things that they could do to make our lives like much more enjoyable for example putting our main shop at the top so that you put the ones that cost gold at the top versus the ones that cost gems. You don't have to scroll down as much. Or when you click buy on something, you don't teleport back to the top of the screen. You know, like these small things. And there's many across the game. Um, or if you hit collection and you filter and you, let's say, pick attacker and then you close the collection, you open the collection again. Guess what? The filter doesn't stay. Or like a magnitude of various things like that that could just make the game a little bit more enjoyable less annoying but resource generation is probably the one that people are most focused on besides content and this is one that i want to lightly mention because i don't think we're at a point where we need to push for this super heavily 
not necessarily because well it wouldn't be nice to have additional resources because that would be great but from a realistic perspective because not everyone um well everyone wants more resources but also you have to balance it out between the game making money so right now i think the biggest thing is gear 9 and gear 10 and gold and character xp those three things are really on people's minds i think character xp and gold are still things that people need to consider and uh, well might need a little bit of bump in terms of how much we're acquiring specifically character xp i find that to be the biggest bottleneck in a lot of different scenarios but when you're going ahead and considering the gear 9 and gear 10 they've already started to add the weekly shop so now free to play players and whales alike can go ahead and spend their gems to acquire more pieces i think this is the first step eventually we're going to need some way to probably farm it maybe on a hard node one of the later hard nodes or something like that maybe added to the challenges system maybe parts of them added to the challenge system in order to alleviate some of the gear crunch because this game has a severe gear crunch when you hit gear 9 and gear 10 it like just straight up stops like it's gonna take still even with the additional shop like months and months and months to get characters to gear 9 and gear 10 which i think is a consideration but not necessarily a problem yet again as you develop these things in the game they kind of wean you into them where they start you can't access them besides this like ultra exclusive area of the game then they may access it by paying money or like earning it very slowly and then they slowly make it easier and easier to acquire eventually i'd love to see them double the amount of shards you can get from hard nodes i think that that's a really nice change that star wars galaxy of heroes make and heck you can even do that at this current moment because of how I say annoying hard node farms truly are we're talking like seven months farms right so if you double it it's like three and a half months farms like it's it's really not that big of a deal but of course again when you're considering a realistic perspective i think the two ones that are on my mind are um gold character xp those kind of go to hand in hand and then gear nine and gear 10 those two are going to be or three are going to be the most important ones to consider but we don't have a really major problem yet but i do think it's something that we should consider going forward Overall, I mean, I'm still having fun. I enjoy developing my characters. And if you don't like that, then you're not gonna like this game. The main appeal to these types of games is to see your roster grow over time, see you level up in terms of getting your characters to start up, getting your characters geared up, etc., And then eventually performing things with those characters to unlock more characters or unlock more rewards. And while raids, in my opinion, aren't particularly enjoyable, at least chapter one isn't, well, I do enjoy building up my characters. I do enjoy logging in, using my energy every day, even though it's really not that long of a process. It's just kind of a, a casual, more chill aspect of the game. And if you compare it to other games like Watcher of Realms or um, Eternal Evolution that I'm playing right now, well, I'll, I could spend hours in Watcher of Realms and I get frustrated with that because of how long I sometimes have to spend in that game because of the manual aspects of it. So. It's a nice balance and i do think that there is like a point where there's too much content and there's a point where there's too little and i think that overall heroes and middle Earth is on that too little side of things and i'd love to see additional game modes be added to the game but let me know what you all think in the comment section down below i thought this was kind of an interesting video just talking about the state of the game and where we're at what we need for the game because well we're about to get chapter three raids and then eventually chapter four raids and then we're eventually going to get the glyph system added which is going to be big content updates so we'll see of course, these are just grand old points that they made. We'll see what they actually give us after we get the fourth chapter of raids released because that's kind of the current goal. So another month and a half from now, we might be seeing slash saying something completely different. See you for the next one.